What was that piece again? Sure, no problem. That was the first movement of Florence Price's Sonata in E minor from 1932. And what's your name? Madeline Rogers. <laughs> yeah. And where do you teach? I teach uh, piano at Berea College in Kentucky. Oh, great. Yes. So, delighted to be here. Absolutely <laughs> delighted. This is the, the best, best day of my life. <laughs> it's really wonderful. Yeah. And this one also uh, has the, the patent repetition action spring. Yes. So, you know, everybody's going for the same sort of thing. How yes. do you How do you get really, really fast repetition? Yes. There's several ways of accomplishing it. What we do in, in modern times is we never let the hammer go all the way down until we completely release the key. Right. And, but on, on this one, what we're doing is we make sure that, that the jack can slip back underneath the butt of the, the uh, hammer shank so no. it, can, it can bring it back up. Because uh, it turns out to be a little bit finicky, uh, yes. on most of the ones that you'll ever find on Broadwoods that have had that, somebody's gone in and removed the repetition spring oh, really? so oh. that they take away some of the finickiness, but you also take away some of the subtlety. Yes. Mm -hmm. This one has not had its spring uh, uh, wow. interfered with in any way. In fact, it's almost all original strings and certainly all original hammers on this one. Oh. So, wow. so it's very much more of the sound of 1845, yeah, you know, coming back to you, uh, which is a neat thing to discover. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's even more compelling when it's in tune, <laughs> <laughs> which it is not. <laughs> but still, we were just talking about, um, I have a chamber group in Lexington, and how much easier it would be to balance with the other instruments on something like mm -hmm. this. I, I just did the, the Schumann Quintet in December, and we're doing like Schumann again next next spring, and it's like, oh yes, of course, it works so much better. So we're at 4:35 uh, on this one, uh, oh. which is uh, roughly where it would have been. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, yes. as you know, a was. Kind of depending yeah. on where you were in, in exactly. the world and when you were in the world. Exactly. That makes yes. sense. Um, exactly. But but that being said, you know, four four thirty five was was about where where things belong. Could it be tuned to four forty? The answer is yes, it could be. Yeah. Uh, but it's easier on the piano if, if we don't go too far. Yes. So. I don't want to push the boundary too much. Yes. Or a oh, second set of jacks ah. that just pluck up close yes. you know, to where it leaves the case, and so you're right. going to get. And that's almost all harmonic at that point, and yeah. hardly any fundamental. Wow. If I will pluck deeper at the same time, I can yes. keep all my harmonics. Yes. But then I'll get the fundamental back. And if I take it off, it just gets sweet. And then with the 2 by 8 The big English sound. Yes. Yeah. Tremendous. You can imagine it being played in its time. Yeah. So uh, this was the wedding present from King George to Charlotte. Um, wow. When she came to London. And then in 1763, when, when Mozart and his uh, older sister yes. Nano came yes, to yes. court, then, uh, then this would have been the harpsichord of record for that because this was the nice harpsichord in the, in the palace, Incredible. not Buckingham. 
Uh, this was a, of another palace. Yes. Uh, Buckingham wasn't really the residence of the, the, the king and the queen mm -hmm. back in the 18th century. Yes. Um, so, absolutely beautiful, and then it's flanked by its twin sister, which also lovely, but it's a mirror image. Oh, notice. I see. Ah. That. So this one has the dark background with light yes. figures, and this one has the light background with dark figures. Wow! So same maker. Same maker. Yeah. Um, when you cut out this elaborate uh, marquetry, and, and uh, when I say elaborate, this eagle is 27 different pieces of wood, not okay. only cut out, but then hand shaded in hot sand to scorch it, oh my and then put back together so that you get that kind of 3D look. Yes. So this is a, a massive amount of work. Yeah. Well, what they did, it, it's, it's hard to see unless you look really closely. This part is cut individually. Yes. But there's a seam that oh, runs along yes, here. Oh, yes, I see that. And so this would be folded like that. What? And, and so you're going to have, uh, effectively, you're going to cut through two pieces of dark wood and two pieces of light wood. Well, when you finish this, what will you be left with? You'll be left with a, a whole piece which has got a light background and, and dark figures. Yes. And that's where that is. Oh, my, oh goodness. my goodness. So, yeah, it's, it's a way of, uh, use up all the marketry, man. Yes. <laughs> we went yes. to a lot of trouble to make this. Oh, my goodness. That is incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, was this from the same location? Or from somewhere else? Uh, well, this one was also in, in London. This was uh, at, at Havering the Tower, okay. which is uh, north of, uh, slightly north of London okay. uh, today. Yeah. So it's a beautiful uh, country, rural countryside, and there's a, a, a great house out there. And this was at the, uh, the Bower House wow. in, in wow. Uh, Havering. Um, Sir John J. Smith, very dull name. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, but he was a very uh, influential uh, individual and yes. apparently a wealthy musician wow. kind of guy as well. So, right. so he had this one, and then uh, uh, Christy Tolstoy, the daughter-in-law of, of uh, uh, Leo yes, Tolstoy, yes. Uh, yeah. was a harpsichordist. So she bought this in London in '65 and brought it back to New York. And, and oh my goodness! At one point, uh, they 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 took it to Mexico. Oh. Uh, in, in the back of a, a like a VW van, oh my uh, so that she could uh, play while her husband Paul was an arch anthropologist, archaeologist, and he was doing stuff in, in Mexico. So, pack up um, the and go. so they packed up the harpsichord. Wow. And went. It was hard on the harpsichord. I can imagine. Had to, oh, I had to do some things to, uh, yeah. to sort things back out. Yeah. Wow, incredible. Absolutely. And then the, the little yes, the Italian. You know, a gorgeous instrument, a smaller sound. But if I need the C to go down to a C, as you yes. see, it stops at an E. Right. But you've heard of the broken octave. Well, this one has broken octave. So yes. uh, in thorough bass, I'm not ever going to really need an F sharp or a G sharp. True. And I can sacrifice them, and I've done so. So, <laughs> so the E will now be my C. Oh, I uh, see. Fantastic. The F sharp will now be my D. Okay, so it's just that first. And then the, the, the D yeah. sharp will be my E. And then when I go to F, I, yes, it's, the it's, A. It's, it's, that's the normal octave. Right. making a four octave harpsichord become a four and a half octave yes. harpsichord. Yes. Since you like to play piano, here's one that you never had a chance to get in front of. So this one uh, made uh, to go into South Carolina. Okay. Or in, in your case, uh, you know, into Kentucky. Okay. Um, this is a unicorn. So this a one, unicorn? A unicorn. So this has one, one string, string for every note. 
So it oh, means nice. that this any one note must always sound good to itself. Yes. It isn't all that terribly quiet because the strings are also much heavier gauge than okay. they normally would be. But what it does is it, it allows it to effectively be in tune for longer. Because there's only one string. That makes sense. Yeah, for the note. But you might enjoy just just trying it out because it's uh, it's a pretty cool feel. Notice yeah. how how shallow the action uh, is on, on this one. So shallow. Yes. So what, what was happening, the, uh, the, 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 the builders had found that there was a huge market in the far west, yes. which in this case is like Memphis, right. <laughs> and, and the, uh, the, the deep south, Yes. but one of the problems is that the entrepreneurs are going to be through every yeah. couple of years. Couple of years. Exactly. Uh, so what to do, what to do? Well, if it would stay in tune longer, people would, yes. would buy them and enjoy them. That makes sense. And so between 18, roughly 1829, when Nuns introduces this, and, and 1839, uh, this was a popular kind of piano huh. to come into the South. We have two of these really? uh, in the collection, wow. one from 1830, this one was 1834. Wow. And uh, I've, I've run into others. Yes. Um, but you'll largely run into them here in South Carolina or Very or in Georgia. Okay. They, okay. They, they didn't. They didn't hardly at all travel up into the north. Interesting. So, and only a decade of production. Like putting that in the really? Really? And, and actually, uh, you know, five or six years of that. And then by that time, uh, particularly, you know, it's un unfortunate to say it, but, you know, after the, 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 the Cherokee were relocated and the lands were sold, yes. well, now there's enough people in these remote, remote areas where, you know, piano people were coming right. through on a more regular right. basis. That makes and so you didn't have to worry about it. So yeah. I, this is the Nuns and Clark, and I have also the Nuns yeah. and Clark almost the same year with the bichord. So you can okay. hear the difference. The difference. Yes. Because a bichord is going to sound a lot different than this. Still has this rather shallow action because yes. they they liked uh, a, a, an action that was very medium. Yes. And, and yes. it's not very heavy either. No, uh, it's really not. But it produces a, a fair amount of sound for that. Yes. Yeah, it really does. This one could also do 144 on the high. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yeah. This is very, very I've never heard of one that had only the one string. That's that's really, really interesting. So so the the, the unicorn was a it was actually a European invention. Chopin uh, played an early one and loved it. Oh, really? Absolutely loved it, and and there, huh. there's uh, plenty of of you know notes where he recorded how how he, he enjoyed this, this huh. thing, which got people thinking. Uh, you know, well maybe it's it's a deal. So Pape, uh, you know, brings out a unicorn in Europe, and uh, the nuns are reading stuff, and oh yeah, so they got a, a, a German named Sackmeister to come up with a scale that would work, Yeah, yeah. and they brought it forward, the, the guy copied it, and, and they had a unicorn for a while. We don't see them very often anymore because so many of these have just gone, yeah. gone away. You know, yes. They, they, they're no longer with us. Yes. Um, and the, this Amelia Shear, uh, from 10 years earlier, uh, this is the piano. Is it? You know, it's, it's. We're bringing them up in Philadelphia. This one has very much of a, a, a mix between the the Viennese approach and the English approach. On the the action on the inside yes. is their own sort of action, and it's it more strongly resembles the Viennese action than it does the English action. But it's a, oh, wow. it's a lovely it's a lovely sound as well. And you have.
have the split pedal here. I was just about to ask because so, it sounded so like a what, what, And a lot of these, one of the pedals is a moderator and the other pedal is the damper. But on this yeah. one, what it does is this pedal will change the damper on just the top part. I'm still damp down here, but I'm just I'm just raising the dampers here so that my my middle will sing. Yes. Wow. A different soundscape. That's incredible. For a totally different aesthetic. And yeah. And when I push the other pedal. And that's the dampers on everything. Right, right, right. But that a very so different aesthetic. Um, and until you see one of these, well, you wouldn't even know what that meant. No, no, not in the slightest. So you need to bring the kids. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I absolutely will. Oh my goodness. Wow. Absolutely. And so, did composers write for that type of pedaling? Because uh, I have never they, heard of that. So when you when you go to you, you've probably seen those bound volumes of like, yeah. like this one of yes, various yes, yes. pieces of sheet music. Yeah. Uh, so people would collect that stuff. What would happen is that uh, as you're taking lessons, um, the, 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 your, your teacher would sort of guide you to where you could use these sound effects. It was hard literally to write that in. Yeah, but, I, that's what I was thinking. But uh, you know, the, the, the young students would learn how to make use of it. Yes. In the German community, some of these pianos have uh, have a pedal that rings a bell and beats a drum. Oh, yeah. And yes. then uh, the, the bassoon The stop. Turkish march. Yeah, the, Turkish the, music. The uh, we have a nice grand that does that, that's, that, that startles everybody, and a, yeah. square, <laughs> a square that does that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and in those communities, uh, you know, your teacher would teach you very differently than they would right. in the, the, the London plan, kind of. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Wow. Have you had a chance to go upstairs yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was immediately pulled into the show. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll, you'll want to do that as well. But uh, just want to show you. I certainly oh appreciate goodness. that so much. Oh, my goodness. Did you try the club? Yeah. No. I've always wanted to try it. And you know how they work. Yes. And it remains in contact with the string so you can yes. manipulate the sound. Just the pivot. Yep. Push down, there's the tangent. Yep. And that's going to touch the string. Yep. That will make the chord between here and the bridge. Yep. And then when I let it down, the damper in the back will stop everything back out. Yes. So delightfully simple yes. in its construction. And yet more expressive Much in its own more. way than any other keyboard because yes. I have total control on touching the string. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Yes. I wish I had some CPE Bach in my fingers right now. Well, you'll have to make up a little PDQ Bach. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that will be the way to go. wondered if you can actually and you can <laughs> now what you want to do How is do up you? and down oh up and down <laughs> I always read about yes, this and I thought can I actually do it <laughs> yeah so it's not side to side but it's up and down 
It always cracks me up when people try to do that on the modern grand in performances. And I'm like, you guys know. <laughs> you know it's not a clavichord. <laughs> yes, exactly. You have to know this. You have to know. I can do vibrato. I can't. <laughs> she plays the violin. I'm, the violin so. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I can never do it. It's the one thing. All right, well, we've settled that. Now you have to yes. Yes. have a clap. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That was, that's like lifelong dream coming true from like years of music history classes. Yep. Ha! Ah. Well, we go. And then this little square piano, uh, 1787. Yes. So this is, is like, as the square piano is first brought forward. Yes. Let's try it. This okay. Is, this is the sort of soundscape that, that it would create. Okay. Broadwood? Broadwood. Oh, oh, entirely different. Now this board that you see is original to the instrument. Okay. And it's, I, the idea for this is to dampen some of the harsher uh, uh, accidental or, or, or partials in there that, okay. that, that you know would maybe not be as tolerable to the ladies. <laughs> okay. But uh, uh, <laughs> and they they, they they you know labeled it front. So you know, <laughs> You can try it one more time. Oh, okay. <laughs> and now you're kind of getting the, the full oh, Broadwood. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of our better pianos. So when Zumpy uh, invents the square piano, his yeah. idea was take the shape of the clavichord yes. and then throw a little hammer up at the strings. Okay. And uh, and then we'll be because what are they doing? They're trying to find a way to make pianos that are less expensive. Yes. When, mm -hmm. when Christopher right. comes out with this piano, it's wonderfully conceived, but it costs twice what a harpsichord costs to make. Yeah. And. There's no music written for it, and nobody's right. trained to play it. Right, so exactly. everybody's looking at this thing and going, well, that's nice, but you know, what what's it? in it for me? Yes. <laughs> so it's really, it's, it's kind of a plaything for yes. yeah. uh, kings and princes. Yes. Yeah. Those are the only ones yes. that really have one. Could afford it. Until Zumpy comes along and says, well, how about this? And Queen Charlotte gets one of the very first ones of okay. Zumpy's. Okay. And she loved it, so her yes. ladies in waiting had to have one. Uh, of course, of had course. To have one, and then you know, away it goes. Wow. And then the little instruction. Little manual. instructions on, on, <laughs> on how to warm the dampers yes. in French as well as. Yes, I English. noticed. That's okay. It's in French because a lot of these are going into Paris. Of course. Okay. Of course. That makes sense. Yeah. And then, in the Revolution. Yes. The big. Tascans like this are what gets taken out and burned. Oh, but if they tragic. found if they found a little square piano, well, that went home to Mama. Oh, I ah, see. So, so, Easy you know, way. Yeah, pianos were huh. egalitarian, and they were they were a citizen's instrument, 
It was oh, a piano for people. And so you didn't tear up the little square pianos, you took those home. Wow. Uh, and, and a number of those have survived, whereas only six Tascanas are left in the world. Double, double manual like that. Really? Six? Six. Oh my goodness. Alas. Alas. Oh my goodness, that's so tragic. Just from, yeah, from oh, that makes sense. Wow. Okay, I need to get Jonathan to come down here oh my and play a chamber concert here. Oh my goodness. So, functionally, this is one of our finest harp supports. Again, uh, with the French, we have the three sets of, of jacks, not four. Yeah. Right. The front set of jacks played by the top keyboard. <laughs> Bottom will play the back jack, so it's a little more full sounding. Yep. Not a huge difference, but just enough. Yeah. And then if you like those two sounds, you can actually hear them together. set up like a machine gun, so yep. we hear the forefoot, yep. we hear the front, we hear the back. Um. Beautiful big sound, and then for the top. Which these little buff leather pads oh, that come along. Some sort of uh, bird, bird on the side, and all these small patterns. Three to two. Mm -hmm. We have the moderator, yes. which when you pull that in, then Yes. And then finally, 
And then, of course, most of these would have been made with a little bell system on the side. Yes. And then we hit and, and beat the, the bottom of the soundboard with a drum. Yep, yep, yep. Which was, in fact, the very first kick drum mechanism. That makes uh, sense. This guy was, was doing his PhD in, in uh, percussion. Yep. And, you know, he had, uh, he had cut, suddenly come to the realization that the kick drum begins with, with um, you know, with these pianos, and yeah. so I was able to provide him, you know, some diagrams nice, and some works, nice, and nice. here are the pictures. So. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, I was just thinking of the context of like recitative in opera and being able to like pick different things from, for different characters and the bassoon pedal. Bassoon? Not me, if I that would that would come through for baritone for sure. Yes. For an intimate uh, uh, home performance. You have these two. This is the the Keenan Brackley spinning harpsichord from 1712. Whoa. But uh, try it because there's just something so immediate and you can really feel the, the, the keyboard, you know, singing in your fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have the multi-step, it's just there. It's just there. And you can just tell that's an mm -hmm. early sort of sound. So mm -hmm. early. Even a different touch than yes. that one. Very different. Very different touch. Little plectra to, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. A dress on this one, but, right? Uh, but so you have a bridge on the soundboard here and also here, oh. and, and so with two bridges, yes, uh, then it creates a very different soundscape than yeah. with all the others have just got one bridge, yes. Interesting. 1939, okay. And you may wonder, well, Victor, uh, what? yeah, what, what's all that about? Yeah, so this is the story tone, okay. Uh, and 
It's a combination of story and chorus, okay. piano manufacturers, and okay. R.C. Victor. Okay. It has strings. Okay. It has hammers, just like a regular console spinet. Okay. But it has no soundboard. No soundboard. No soundboard at all. Okay. Instead of a soundboard, we've got an electric pickup what? for all the strings, just like an electric guitar. So. What? what? So I have, of course, a sustain pedal. Yes. I even have a working sostenuto pedal in the middle. Okay. For whatever good that is. Yeah, I don't know what I mean. But, but my, my left pedal, which is usually, quote, the soft the pedal, soft pedal. Yeah. is now going to be the loud pedal because that's where the volume control is. What? And without a soundboard, the sustain is and I hear the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the wave of the sound. We're just beating against yeah. the air. Wow. So I, no sound. No sound board. So I can bring in a little bit of depth control. So, so uh, the idea was that people wanted a big piano sound, but they only wanted a small piano in the house. Okay. 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 Right. And and uh, it, you know the the concept was just in its nascent form. Ultimately, everybody decided yes, pianos don't need this because they can be loud. Guitars, on the other hand, really benefit. From yes, they do. Exactly. But if you have inside of this is one of the very best amplifiers that could be made in 1939. It's wow. A, it's a four uh, 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 amplifier tube quad of, of two A3s, and so it produces about 20 to 30 watts, which for the time is a lot. Yes. yes. They don't even have a speaker that can give you the bass sounds. So on this one, there's a fairly big speaker in there, but then behind it is this labyrinth uh, of, of a uh, cavity that then opens up into a big hole on this side, which is where the bass comes from. So it really gives you a good bass response. Oh, oh my word. And if you have the best amplifier in the world, well, yeah. then you probably want to play your radio through it. Oh my gosh! Oh my <laughs> so in the bench, it's built in the radio. Well, I'm gonna get a picture oh, of that. I well, do. So if, you, oh if, if you've got a radio in the bench, well, you probably want to phonograph Oh it. my <laughs> word! The all-in-one. The all-in-one. Oh, truly, my truly all-in-one. That is crazy. Uh, this particular record is uh, Father Earl Hines playing the story tone. Oh, you know, uh, Because you'd have to have wow. Earl Hines yes. playing his yes. story yes. tone. Of course, of course. Of course. Interesting title, Child of a Disordered Brain. Child of a Disordered Brain. Huh. Um, oh, my um, word. And it, it's a jazz piece, of course. But uh, <laughs> they, 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 they have... They had talked Earl Hines into to recording for the, the, the story to, to you know, make. Yeah, I can imagine. So uh, came out in 39. Uh, oh, my goodness. Unfortunately, we entered the war in 41. Right. Yes. And by 42, all production of non-war related things yes. stops. And then it never came back after? After 45, uh, Story and Clark began making pianos again, but they just put a mahogany soundboard in there. Oh, so. did away with the whole idea. Then away with the whole idea, but the electric guitar guys, oh, we're not so fast. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, wait a minute. <laughs> this is working for this us. This is a pretty good idea. Yeah. Can I? Try it. Oh my goodness. Okay. okay. So just without. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So I'm going to do that so sure. that you can hear. Yeah. Now, push on the <laughs> volume control.
right. Crazy. <laughs> crazy, man. That's crazy. So what's uh, until it's warmed up with the yeah. older electronics, it wants to go into kind of a, a, an overdrive. Yeah, but yeah. After about 20 minutes, that's gone. And, and, and this has to be the works. Yeah. For, yeah. For the, I've maybe used that twice in my career. Exactly. You right. know. <laughs> <laughs> when And the neat part is, you can, it's the only piano that can get louder after you start. After you play, yes. Yeah. That is pretty cool, actually. That was the other thing you can do as a violinist that I can't do. Yes, I know. <laughs> this is not fair. It's leveling our playing field, but I yes. don't like this. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody's asleep in the house, you play it without, and then you know, And then when you, you know, want to wake up, everyone in the house. But it's, it's almost organ-like in that, that sustain. That's really... But you still have the pedal, which makes everything much better. Get the best of all the world. Yes! I'll, I'll, I'll tear it up, and you can come show everybody. Oh my goodness, I would absolutely love that. This yes. is incredible. I did not know that this existed at all. And it, I mean, it even That's why we like have it. stable music music. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh my goodness. Incredible. Wow. Well, y'all poke around upstairs for a little bit. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah. Stay a while. Yeah.